thread I'm going to be using is the uni thread fire orange and eight oh. I'm simply going to start thread at the eye and put down a layer of thread all the way along the shank and stop the thread and cut away or break away the waist piece and line with the barb of the hook. Now I'm going to use a, a medium red holographic tinsel. This one here is by Benyards. Just take it around the bed, bend, and then come back up. Looking for around about two to three mil a tag. And we just touch one side with the super glue. And when I wind the tinsel round, I'll take its own small reservoir of super glue all the way around and allow it to stick. Now you don't want to put too much on. The main reason for that is it's the actual super glue will take away uh, the red holographics well, and it'll go silver. Now it's, it's okay, I mean it wears and it's it suits the fly, it's, it's not going to do any harm to it, like, so, but just, you want it red, keep it red, and that's the easiest way to keep it red. And then, a uh, small gold oval tinsel, just catch it in, and the way down with the thread, and I turn the thread up, just basically to tidy things up. Now I'm going to use this, it's called Supernatural Original Blend, now this was by David Rice. I don't know if David's working now, but uh, I bought this from the Glasgow Island Centre, and they have a good supply of it. And you can see it's coral. Now, it's a Wopsy product, so I would expect Wopsy will still have this dubbing blend. Now, as you can see, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice colour. It's actually two mixed together. If you if you look close, close, you can actually see it's actually pink and yellow, but you think it was orange looking at the colour. Just with the two blended together, it just gives that impression. It's a really nice colour on a on a body. Now you just dub it on. Now it is a natural fibre. It's a, like I think it's mohair. It feels like mohair anyway. Now just wind it up. It's forming a nice shape, not too tight. You want I want the the hackle to slightly sit into the uh, the dubbing, and I want to bring some of the dubbing into the actual hackle fibres as well. Just slide it up. Just want to balance the body a wee bit better just there. It's fine. Now the body hackle is a sunburst. This is a saddle hackle. It's uh, dyed, obviously sunburst. Uh, it's a Metz grade 2. Bear some of the stem, catch it on the side. Thread down to the iron back up. Now, I've got an area that around about two mil, just at the head, a couple of turns at the top, and then take your hackle down. Now you can quickly take it down, or in this case, add an extra. Now some people like about three, four turns at the most. I think that's about, about five turns or so, just to make it slightly heavier. And then bring your rib up through. You see the slight variant to the, the body. Or the rib, use a red wire or something like a UTC. Uh, it just certainly changes the look of it. But anyway, bring your thread up beside the oval tinsel, put a nice 90 degree bend into your tinsel so that it gets a better grip. You'll find it keeps the turns, the rib, you've made on the body much tighter. It doesn't slow or throw any slack turns into it. Again, tidy up. I always say tidy up. Now all I'm going to do here is use the velcro to bring out some of the, the dubbing. Just draw it back. Now, I always say a fly, once it's been in the water and fished, will always look much better. You could use a natural pheasant tail leg, and this is optional, like, but just it's very popular in a lot of flies now. You're adding a bit of leg onto them. Now, this is a natural dyed. And this is a uh, natural dyed red. The red's not as strong in the camera, but 
it is quite a nice red. Now, it, you can use that just to enhance the colour of the fly, which I'm going to do around about six fibres. If you bring them 90 degrees from the stem, you'll find all these ends will line up naturally and tear them off. Take three from either side. Let me quite look and see how they're going to sit. Just look at the shape. The shape in the legs. They're going to be nice and tight to the body. That looks okay. And then come up. And this is where I start to add a bit more wax to the thread. Just especially for tying in, tying off certain things. The fly will be much stronger. Now when you go to wind something on, especially like I'm going to do either another hackle or in this case I'm going to use some deer hair. It just gives it a wee bit more grip. You have a wee quick look and see how the legs are sitting. You could have them underneath if you want. It's entirely up to you. Uh, I just like the style of the legs on the side. Now for the, the deer hair at the head. This is elk hair dyed burnt orange. Now to get the burnt orange, what I do is hot orange dye, vineyards, get bring it to the put it in, bring it to the boil. You'll see the colour starting to take and then add in a tiny bit of red which will make it much deeper. And it's basically what I call either flame or burnt orange. Now you don't need it a huge amount. Just plant it. Now cut the deer here as close to the skin as possible. And Twist your finger and thumb, and this opens the fibres out. Remove the broken ends and any under fur. Into your stacker. Points first. You tap on the desk. You see the ends have all lined up. Remove it from the stacker. The length, if you imagine if you're going to wind a hackle on there, your body hackle, right, you'd your front hackle would be slightly longer than that. Now I want the same idea in the deer hair. I don't want it too long. You could have it longer if you wish. It's entirely up to yourself. Uh, more as a hackle, just slightly shorter. Get the length, then hold it. And then do two loose turns. And slowly tighten up and allow the deer hair to run all the way around. And then bring the thread through the cut ends now. Just before I go any further, I'm going to check they're okay. That's fine. And it's just a small muddler head. You pull it back, bring your thread to the front. Make sure you've got wax onto your thread at this point. Cause, and keep the thread tight. This will give you all the grip that you need just to tie off. Just come in, pull the deer hair back. Nice and tight. You may catch one or two fibres. I've caught one there, so cut away and cut away your thread. Bring out the cut ends. Just take your time. Come all the way around and see where the cut ends are. Just bring them out. You want them so 90 degrees from the hook. And then come in with a nice a curved pair of scissors. Just follow the angle of the, the eye, that's what I normally do. And work my way around. You could make a, a bigger or more muddler like head if you wish. So you need a bit more room. You need about three to four mil. There's only a couple of mil in this one. This is so this is a lightly dressed when it comes to a muddler head. But this is the style I like, I like this. Now you've got a nice collar of deer hair, as well as a small muddler head. A really bright colour, which you'll get in using especially for sunburst and a coral or a blend like the supernatural you'll get an amazing colour combination. We'll certainly see it. See how it's in. it's looking good. Then all you have to do is some varnish onto the eye or onto the head anyway. Just I usually just tap it all round. You will Put some varnish into the eye, don't worry about it. It's very easy to clear, just use a needle. There you go. And there you are. 
And that's the, what I call the Orkney Sunburst muddler. 